Hello good people, I'm Dimitri and today we're talking about my final dual system configuration inside the Evolve X. You know, my first try going air cooling wasn't exactly satisfactory to me. You know, my initial idea of going full air meant that I have to you know, avoid any drivers from all in one coolers and pumps and things like that. And um, I really just wanted to go full knock to a route because their fans are fantastic, their coolers are fantastic. However, for my 8600K, the ITX configuration, that tiny little cooler, while sufficient enough for maybe APUs and lower tier i3s and i5s, uh, I just wasn't able to keep up with my 4.8 gigahertz overclock, and so we had to step up our guns. Now, based on the initial video, everybody was commenting about why not go you know, with a custom loop, why not go with dual all-in-one coolers, which is what I did here. Uh, and I really just wanted to get into the mindset of some Someone who would use two systems for their everyday tasks and really try to utilize that hardware. So um, yeah, let me share my experience with you right after this. The new Enermax LickTech TR4 AIO Liquid CPU Cooler now features this beautifully diffused RGB lighting around the CPU block that can be customized via this control box or through your motherboard. It covers 100% of the IHS, plus it comes in 240, 280, and 360 millimeter variants. Learn more in the description down below. So obviously one of the main advantages of having dual systems inside something like the Evolve X is the fact that you're saving on space. You have two functioning systems, one power supply, the Revolt X, so that is an additional expense, but it is a 1200 watt unit and it is also platinum efficiency, which is awesome. But at $250, it is an expensive unit. However, the fact that it can power two systems, it is an, you know, an added value versus other 1200 watt power supplies that are also platinum efficiency, you're looking around like 150 to $200. So significantly cheaper than the Revolt X. So your upfront cost of doing something like this uh, is going to be much higher versus if you were to just build two systems in two separate cases. And of course, if you go in with a full custom water cooling loop for the dual systems, all that additional you know, cost on water cooling gear is going to offset the additional price you'll spend on the power supply, so that's not really an issue. And I'm thinking majority of people who would gravitate towards doing a dual system inside the Evolve X might potentially just go with like a low power, you know, high efficiency ITX system that you can maybe use for a NAS or your banking or for security reasons. Also, let's not forget you would need a KVM switch to actually optimize your workflow with dual systems when they're so close together. And the KVM switch allows you to use one set of peripherals. So you route everything into it. And with the click of a button, it switches between the inputs from one system to the other. And you can also get them really expensive ones that allow you to reroute HDMI and other uh, video signals too. But for, you know, if you're using one monitor, Simply switching the input is uh, enough for my own personal use, but a KVM switch is crucial. Now, as for the assembly process, this is my third time building inside the Evolve X. So the first thing you must do is uh, just completely assemble your ITX system, pre-route everything so that is working fine, and only then insert your ATX components and the rest of the hardware. It is important to double check to make sure the ITX system is working, and it is hilarious to see you know, a monitor being powered by the GPU, and then the entire body of the case completely empty, and really highlight the unique uh, position of that ITX configuration inside the Evolve X, uh, it almost like hides your system. Uh, and, you know, mounting an ATX motherboard and the rest of your hardware in there, it doesn't really compromise on clearance. You know, it is a bit more difficult routing certain things uh, above the ATX motherboard, but all in all, it is a pretty decent assembly process. For cooling, I went with NZXT Krakens. I love how they look, the pump and that whole mirror design on the interior, especially because there are two of them, I wanted them to match. So I have the X42, which is 140 uh, millimeter radiator for the ITX system and the X72 for the ATX system, which is a 360 rad. So plenty of cooling. I kept the uh, original Noctua fans for the front, nice static pressure through that dust filter. Uh, so I get the best airflow and they're the front. So they are brown, but uh, not really visible when you're looking at the side, which is uh, what I wanted. Because that original plan of going full Noctua, you know, it didn't exactly render a beautiful system versus now, I'm uh, pretty proud of what came out of it. My GPU of choice for the ITX system is the GTX 1060. Uh, it is blower style, so that will help with cooling because it is right against the glass. I didn't want anything too powerful 
And I really just wanted to test out the temperatures when both systems are fully engaged in some type of workload situations, both for the CPU and the GPU. And I'm actually quite surprised at the temperatures. All the hardware is adequately cooled. Both CPUs are at 4.8 gigahertz, which is amazing. And uh, the only hotter item here is the Titan XP. I'm guessing it is because it is getting that hot air from the front all-in-one cooler, plus the backplate of the GTX 1060. So airflow is a bit challenging in that section, but I don't know, 82 degrees Celsius is kind of what you'd expect in like a normal chassis anyway. So I'm pretty happy. And the one thing to keep in mind is that you can actually offset the vertical GPU for the second system slightly away from the panel to give you a little extra uh, breathing room, but that is only possible if your main GPU is does not, it's not too tall and if the PCI cables don't uh, actually interfere with the second vertical card. And as for noise levels, because everything is kind of contained and the only added noise making element is the pump and the additional fan for the X42, it is still pretty quiet uh, and you can't really tell that two systems are on right now. Now, as you can see, I matched everything in green and that is just because the Jedi Order logo on the Titan XP, that is in green and you cannot change the color unless you turn it off. And so I just decided to go full on green for the whole system. You know, the coolers look fantastic in green. The memory looks awesome in green. Uh, you can even have lighting underneath the motherboard on the ASUS boards, on both of them actually. So that's fantastic. And the only mismatch people, the only mismatch is that GeForce GTX logo on the GTX 1060. That is more like yellowish versus everything being like totally green. I do have a Noctua fan for my exhaust, which is brown, but because of the Halux Lux digital RGB fan frame, it lights up the blades and really kind of hides the brown frame, which is a really good alternative that I didn't think would be a possibility to like camouflage the brown fan inside there, but it looks absolutely awesome. And for cable management, I literally spent no time. I simply closed those uh, behind doors onto which you can mount three SSDs onto each. So that's awesome for extra storage. If you are doing, let's say a NAS for the ITX system. And the only kind of weird thing that pops out is the riser cable because it's, uh, it's not totally flush against the frame unless you really pull at the bottom tabs, but I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And so the only thing is they stick out more than the cables. Uh, and that is something to keep in mind. Now, I also reverted back to using an air cooler for the main ATX system just to see what uh, type of opportunities would open up. Uh, you know, the Nocto U12S is a fantastic cooler and it's also pretty low profile, so it does not interfere with anything above it. And with this configuration, you could remove those sliding uh, covers beside the motherboard and insert hard drive cages. So if you're using actually, you know, the ITX system for NAS solutions to populate hard drives in there, uh, that is one option and that would also clear up any heat generated by the all-in-one cooler at the front and therefore you'd have nice fresh intake instead of it being slightly warmed up and if you're not using a gpu for the top itx system it would clear up some of that space for the main motherboard area uh, maybe go in SLI so that things don't get really cooked in that section. And this whole experience of building this dual system configuration three times now has been kind of eye-opening because I realized that it's not for me and I would never use the second ITX system for like majority of recommendations that you guys had suggested in the previous video. I do have a NAS in a separate room, but I realized the potential of building everything in one to potentially offset some of the cost and everything being your own. I don't game while I'm rendering, so that was one of the most popular recommendations uh, because I'm doing other things and I'm not like thinking about, oh, let me jump into, you know, a PUBG match while my video is rendering, which only takes 10 minutes anyway. I don't stream, but I realize the potential of offloading some of that processing to the second ITX system instead of your main uh, ATX. But I also, you know, the, the system hardware here is pretty powerful, so I don't think it would be too much of a bottleneck. And the main thing that I can actually see myself using that second system for is building a Hackintosh so they can have like nice Mac OS experience uh, and, you know, standard PC and editing all that stuff or maybe banking and security purposes, just doing all my really critical and for, you know important things in the ITX system and nothing else there, and then having everything else offloaded to the ATX system. Uh, but that is kind of it. Maybe I'm not going outside of my comfort zone and really trying to figure out how to utilize that second ITX system, but um, I just realized it is not for me, but I'd love to hear you know your thoughts and if you have any dual system experience in one enclosure, what 
is the purpose of uh, each system. So let me know and potentially help others to come up with ideas on uh, why or why not they should go with something like this. Improve your workflow with Stream Deck Mini by Elgato, giving you six fully customizable LCD keys for macro commands, hotkeys, app launches, media control, and a full array of customization for OBS, Twitch, XSplit, and more. Check out the Stream Deck Mini down below. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next video. I'm very proud of uh, the color configuration.